Hi guys, so this is Fabric Revision for today's tutorial and this is the illustration we'll be going with. So let's get right into the video. It's a crop top, bell sleeve and a mini skirt. Let's go. So first of all, I'm going to make the skirt and I'm going to mark 20 plus 2. That's for the stitch allowance. The length, I want the length to be 20 inches. So I'm going to mark that on my fabric and I want this, this different pattern to be at the bottom part of my skirt that's why i'm marking it from this end i want this to be the skirt so that's why i'm marking it 22 right now the next up i'll be marking the waist the waist is size 30 divided by 4 that is 7.5 plus 2 inches that is 9.5 2 inches is stitch allowance as well the next up i will be marking my hip line so for my hip line, I'm going to be using 9 inches. So from my waist down to my hip line is 9 inches. I'll be marking that as well. And I'll be going marking it all over the fabric. Just so I can get a very perfect line. So my hip line, I'm going to measure my hip circumference and divide it by 4. So my hips is 43. Sometimes I use 42 so that I can have a very fitted skirt. So for 42, I'm going to divide it by 4 as well and extra 2 inch for the stitch allowance. So going down, I'm going to take one inch out of my measurements just so I can have a very pencil effect. Sometimes you can take two, but I took one out so that there is ease when I'm moving around in the skirt. I do not want it to be really so fitted that I'll not be able to move very comfortably. So I took out one inch from the measurement from my hip. I took out one inch. And also 2 inch for the stitch allowance as well. So having all those measurements, you want to mark the actual measurements and extra 2 inch. I like this just so I know where I'm cutting, I know where I'm stitching as well. I don't make that mistake. So now I'll be joining the hip line to my waistline from here. And also my hip line down to the end of the skirt from here so that's what that's what i did basically and also the extra two inch i'm also going to be joining those lines together so at the end of the marking you'd see two lines on the fabric The next thing is to mark up my darts. I'll be marking 4 inch on the waistline from the center of the skirt. I'm going to be marking 4 inch is, and I'm going to go out and cut the pattern that I've made on the fabric. And then I'm going to place it for the back of the skirt. So for this part, I'm going to mark out the darts first and then I measure 2 inches out of the fabric. That's 2 inches out of the front of the skirt. And I made sure that there are two inches from the waist down to the end of the skirt. And I'm also going to cut that out as well. So while I'm cutting this, you can notice that I folded the fabric, the lining rather, 
inside the fabric that way it makes it easy for me to cut and then i'm for the back of the skirt i'm going to cut it down from the center as well from what you can see here and then we have two pieces from the back of the skirt so that the two inches i added is for the zipper allowance and also for the slit that i'll be adding to the skirt now i go ahead and so next thing i'm going to cut out the markings that i've done for the darts so i don't miss that point i just create a very small, tiny notch on it then i'm going to be placing the fabric on each other and sew the sides together but before i do that i'm going to pin each side together just so that i have an accurate measurement and i know that i have done i have like i have a sample before going to sew it that's just how i enjoy sewing so i don't make a mistake then i have to stitch and take out the stitch again so i just use safety pins office pin rather to hold them together to make So for the lining, I'm also going to do the same to you. I'm going to use the office pin to hold the sides together. And I'll stitch both ends together where I have guided with the pins. And now we can now join both the lining and the fabric together. So after I've done this, I'm going to sew them together and also make the darts. The dart is about 8 inches long and the sides together that's it and also i'm going to do the same thing for the lining i'm sewing this separately before i now join it to the fabric that the lining and fabric will be different this is the lining i've also done the darts and the sides together now i'll join it together at the end of the fabric before i now proceed to you know make sure that i have each measurements correct then i'll join it at the back i don't know if you understand what i'm saying the back where the zipper and also the the slits will be that is what i'm going to do the final joining instead of joining by the sides the regular way you should do it and this is what we have after i pressed it together next up is to join them together now so i'm turning the fabric inside out and also the lining inside out so then i'm going to join it at the end like what i'm showing can you see this is the right side and i'm facing it facing it on the wrong side of the lining i don't know if you understand right side fits in the right side and then we have both the wrong side of the lining out and the wrong side of the fabric out then i'm going to stitch it at the end of the fabric so next thing i'll be doing after stitching the ends together is to fold the fabric in that way we are pushing the lining out that's upward and that way you can have a very secure you're sure that your lining will not be showing when you're wearing the design so this is what i'm doing i'm holding up and securing with the pin before i press it that's that's something i learned from my friend and it has been saving lives every time i have to wear skirts like this all right so here is a closer look of what i was explaining so you fold it in and secure with a pin before you press it So next is to fold the fabric in half, yes, both front and back, and take out one inch from the center front. Taking out half, sometimes half or one inch of this front, and then you join it to the size of the skirt from what from what you can see here, and then you create that slant and you cut that out. That way, when you're wearing the skirt, there's no excess fold at the front. So after this is done, you can now be sure to, next step is now to add the band to it. So we'll be skipping that part and now we'll be moving to the top. That's the crop top with the belt sleeve. 
so, but this is the outcome of the steps this is where it looks like right now i'm trying to fold them back in shape so you can understand what i was saying yes this is it and this is the front this is the back i'm going to add the zipper band zipper and the sleeve that will be added All right, so for the top, I'm going to be using the measurement of shoulder, armhole, and the neck. My shoulder is 15 inches divided by 2 is 7.5 plus extra inch for stitch. That's the shoulder, keeping the body to the shoulder. All right, so I'm going to mark 1.5 up. That's one and a half inch. That's for the shoulder slope. I'm going to take that down. And next is to move to your neck. So to the neck, I'll be using 3.5 inches for the neck width. And for the neck depth, I'll be using 3 inches. Then I'm going to connect it together. I'm going to create a very, not too curvy curve. <laughs> but it's also going to be a curve. So I'm creating that joining both the width and the depth of the neck. After that, I'll be joining it to the slope that I created. Now that is for the shoulder. So next, from that slope, I'll be marking out eight inches. That's the arm O. I'm marking out eight inches for my arm O. And next is to get my chest line. Chest line will be ten. Sometimes I use eleven inches. Depends on how free or how or the style that I want to create. So for this one, I will be using eleven inches that's for the chest line i'm using 11 inches and i'm going to create a very an horizontal line across that's for the chest line then i'll take out my bust measurement and also divide it by four my bust measurement is 38 so i'm going to divide 38 divided by four that would be the measurement for my chest and bust line For the length of the top, I want to use 15. So I'm going to be adding steel. That's the M allowance for the shoulder and for the M of my top. That's one inch to stitch the M of my top and one inch to stitch the shoulders together. So back to the chest line, remember I said my bust, my bust is 38, that's divided by 4, that is 9 half, that's 9.5 inches. I'm going to be marking that on my chest line and also I'm going to be adding my stitch allowance as well. So for my stitch allowance, I'm just going to add 1 inch, nothing to spare. So to add 1 inch and then I move close to my arm o to create the curve of my arm o for my arm o i'm going to be dividing eight by four it is the length we use for the arm hole. I'm going to divide it by four. 
at that point i'm going to take back half an inch to create a curve on my arm or that way there's ease when i'm moving my hand in the fabric that's in the outfit so i'm going to mark in that point and be creating a curve behind that point from that point now i'm creating the curve around it I'll be doing is extend that line that curve by two inches and next is to calculate my bust line my bust line is 38 divided by four that is 9.5 and I'm going to add an extra one and a half inch to that I'm going to connect that point to the curve After creating it to the point and then take it down to the length of mine. So after that's about done, we can now go ahead and cut out the fabric. So starting with the neckline down to the shoulder slope and then down to the arm. And I'm also going to cut it down to the length of the top. So for the back, I'm also going to place the pattern at the front and I'm going to mark my neckline that way the measure two instead of three that I use for the next step. So I'm going to measure in two for the back. So that way I'm connecting that to the point of my neck. And that's it for the back. Nothing here. So we're not going to be adding extra inches to this because it's not a fitted top. So we'll not be adding an extra inch for the zipper allowance. It's just going to be fitted top. So all we need to do is get the neckline for the back. And that's it. Now that we have these two together, both the front and the back, we'll be going straight to sew them together. But before I sew them, I'll also cut out the lining. Please don't forget that lining is optional. You can choose not to use the lining, but just use the lining. Just it gives it a different fit and feel. So now for the front, because there is no zipper, I'm going to cut out two inches 
I'm just making a very tiny slit at the front of my top. This is the front right now. It has a deeper neckline. So I'm going to be cutting that out. So there is ease when I'm trying to wear my top. So after I've done that, I'll just go ahead and sew my fabric and the lining together. I still put the shoulder and the sides together, but I not split both the back and front together. I prefer to sew the shoulders before stitching it together. That way it's just easier for me. After that is done, we're going to move to the band of the skirt. So for the skirt, I cut out length 32. That is my waist is 30, but I wanted to be on the safer side, so I added 32 inches to it. That's 32 inches. And I'm going to be adding paper stay to this. I've cut out the same length of paper stay to this. So I'm going to open it up like this. So the bandwidth of this is 5. I want it to be 2. So that's 2 and a half on both sides. And the half inch will be the sewing allowance. That way I can stitch. So I'm stitching out half inch to the skirt. Do you understand? So I'm going to go ahead and press this paper stay to the band. Before I now go ahead to sew it to the skirt. But before that, I'm also going to pin it together just so it's in place. So once I iron it, I press it, I take out the pin, and then I go ahead to stitch it to the skirt. So yes, after I pressed it, I'm going to stick it to the skirt. I'm going to be stitching the part that has the paper stay first. So I'm going to stitch it inside out first. Then I'll go ahead and turn it. So that way, this way now I'm just going to stitch the band together. And then we move on to the sleeve. So after I'm done sewing the sleeves together, this is what it looks like on the inside and put the outside part of it. This way I have held the lining together and also created a very good finish to the skirt. So for the sleeve, I'm just going to create a basic sleeve, that's it, and make sure the end part is also wide. Instead of the regular tiny sleeve and she gets, so I'm going to make this also wide and trim out a bell. A slant to create the bell effect. So now this is the top and I've opened it up. This is why I did not so join the sides together. Now that I've opened it up, I'm going to carefully pin the sleeve to the body. Like this way, I'm very sure that when I'm on, when I'm stitching it together, it is very seamless. Instead of just creating it up and trying to create an alloy effect, if you know what I mean. This way has been saving lives for me because I don't have to worry about what oh, the curve is it going to bend and all of that. This way, I'm just going to pin, secure it with the pin first, then I go over to the machine to sew it. Once I pin it, I can always turn it to the right side to see if I've done a very good job. Do you understand? Like, I turn it out and I measure it. I see that, okay, this is perfect before going over to stitch it together. This is what I mean. Like, I've done this now, so I can now join the sleeve, the other side of the sleeve, to the body. That was just a very easy thing for me. But if you have other ways to do your sleeves, please go ahead and do it. Any which of these convenient for you. So this is the finished look. This is everything and I'm in love with this.
you see the front back sides i hope you can see everything the bell sleeves the details yes that's the end of the video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this look as much as i enjoyed creating it and i'll see you all in my next video please head over to my instagram to pick out the next design for this month of june all right thank you i love you